hello and welcome back and today is another memory upgrade video today we are looking at the Synology DS1621 plus the quad-core Ryzen um, DDR4 ECC memory NAS device it was released at the closing stages of 2020 and it arrives with 4 gig of DDR4 sodium ECC memory inside but we want today to look at upgrading that memory beyond that. And not just beyond that, but using unofficial memory. We've got some Crucial and we've got some Kingston memory here. Now, it's worth remembering that Synology do um, very much make a point of saying that if you use unofficial, or in other words, non-Synology branded memory inside their devices, then you are running a unsupported setup. And if something goes wrong, they may not be able to support your warranty. So do bear in mind that although this is a test that I'm willing to perform and I am likely going to invalidate the warranty massively on my devices, you should consider that in your equation when you look at upgrading your system. I know a number of you look at the Synology memory and go, a bit pricey, isn't it? Also, you look at the lead times and go, how long? So I can understand why a number of us want to go ahead and upgrade our memory beyond uh, Synology's own memory modules. But do bear in mind, there's a few factors in today's video that are very, very important. First and foremost, although we're going to be upgrading this with two crucial memory modules there, at, uh, both 16 gig each, we're also going to be upgrading with Kingston 32 gig DDR4 memory modules inside here. The reason that's uh, kind of a sticky wicket here is because this device, that CPU, in pretty much everywhere I read, it has a maximum supported memory of 32 gigs. It's Synology themselves say this device cannot exceed 32 gig official memory, and the memory, uh, sorry, the CPU itself, the Ryzen V1500B, that CPU on its official spec pages, and I'll show you on the screen later on when we're doing the testing, says that it can't exceed 32 gig. However, a lot of these spec sheets have a tendency to go out of date. And actually, the 32 gig sodium DDR4s that we're seeing weren't actually as available at the time of launching that CPU as they are now. And a lot of those spec sheets may not have simply been updated. On top of that, I have seen a number of NAS and th um, NAS systems and just general server systems featuring that Ryzen that actually have a CPU max memory of 64. 4 gig supported so it's going to be very interesting to see two things one will this nas see the 232 gig module later in the video and two once we set it up with some vms because we've got two virtual machines inside here two windows vms can we assign a huge pile of memory to both of them simultaneously and both they and the system function so with this nas what we're going to do is open this bad boy up at the base and I'm going to go ahead and install the two crucial sticks inside. Now, in the description, it should detail either the memory modules that we're utilizing today, or it should link to an article on NAS Compares where I have highlighted the memory modules. Also, during the course of the video, I've got tabs open on this laptop that show you the precise memory modules we're using today, rather than me reading the names of these model IDs to you here on screen. So if we remove the base, we can see inside here, we have a single memory module inside, and this will be Synology's own DDR4 ECC module inside. We've already set up DSM on this, the latest version, and those two Windows VMs in the base. There is our Synology module coming out there. I'm just gonna pop that there on the anti-static. And from here, we're going to install the two crucial 16 gig modules. I'm gonna pop those inside one facing the rear there but then make sure you hear the click and then we'll pop in the other module in the other side so we'll pop that in there once again hear the click and again remember i'm doing this today so you guys don't have to so that means when i'm doing this you guys don't have to you know potentially knacker or unsupport your own warranty um also this system has two drives inside uh, and that is in a RAID in typical RAID environment. We're not using SHR here. Um, on top of that, this has that virtual machine software already installed, Synology's Virtual Machine Manager. Um, and I've also installed Clex for a video coming up soon. That's largely irrelevant here for what we're doing. But that's the memory installed inside this device. I'm going to go ahead and set this up just behind me here. Give it three to five minutes to boot. And then I'm going to make my way over to the screen here 
so we can have a little look inside have a look at the resource monitor check those vms and see if on the first step it sees the two crucial 16 gig modules now let's hop in Okay, so our DS1621 Plus has booted, and I'm pleased to say that the system can see our 32 gig of memory. There it is, 32 gig of memory next to that Ryzen V1500B. And on top of that, if we make our way into the resource monitor, we're able to see that it has once again seen the memory in the memory section there. Don't worry about the graphical thing there. In the past, I have highlighted my concern against that sort of thing, but apparently this is quite normal and something I've seen on Synology memory as well. So down there, we can see that 30... 0.3 gig of free memory there the system's utilizing a little bit of it and of course we can go into the resource monitor uh, sorry not the resource monitor the Synology virtual machine manager and we can see the two VMs that I've already set up there a couple of Windows 10 VMs that I have already set up for uh, this video both of which have got uh, we've got two cores of memory so I'm probably going to ramp that down in memory so we're going to put that down to one core each well, on that quad-core CPU. On top of that, we're going to ramp that memory there up to an impressive 12 gig of memory. So we're going to go ahead there and let that synchronize there. And same goes for the other one as well. Again, we don't really want to utilize one. This is a four-core CPU there. We don't want to go too crazy. But for now, we've got 12 gig as well. And again, because we're using a single core of the Ryzen embedded CPU, uh, despite us utilizing 12 gig of memory, it's worth remembering that this is Windows 10 Enterprise Edition running on a single uh, non-GPU equipped core. And this is on two hard drives in a RAID array. So this is not going to be the quickest VM. We're not judging the VM based on its performance. We're just using these VMs in order to identify that they are grabbing the memory on these individual memory modules. So let's go ahead and power these two um, VMs on. We'll let that first one ramp up there. Um, we've allowed uh, CPU sharing as well, so this should be fine if we go ahead and power this one on. That one's going to prepare, and that should switch to running in just a moment. Uh, and while we let those two boot up there in the background for the first time, we can see the utilization there just ramping up there on the monitor. We're going to see that memory utilization spike. We're up to 80% already. And while those two VMs uh, boot up, let's get open up their individual windows as well in VNC. Put them in the right order, VM1, VM2. While it does that, as going back to my earlier conversation, let's have a look at a couple of websites here. This is CPU Monkey, and as you can see, the V1500B, they list that CPU to utilize 32 gig of memory. Same goes if we head over to um, Wikichip, we go down there and straight away, 32 gig of memory. But if we go to websites uh, um, such as the QNAP, which utilizes this same CPU, it does go up to 64 gig. Now, this is the 16 gig module we're using today. Um, there is the model ID there. Do bear in mind that you are going to have to make sure you are using dual rank memory. Very, very important because uh, if you use single rank memory, a lot of the individual memory uh, uh, cells on the memory module there, the result will be they'll be too big for the system to, to deal with. Dual rank memory allows memory to be separated a great deal um, more evenly across the PCB there. Later on, we'll be looking at that Kingston module there. And again, this is another dual rank memory module. And again, you don't have to go to Amazon, of course. Uh, there are links in the description, which, you know, obviously I get a kickback on those, but you don't have to go there. You can go back to Kingston if you choose. And Kingston's own uh, website there, they've got the memory module readily and visible there. And if you scroll down, it's 2,666 2, megahertz, non-ECC, and again, dual rank architecture there. So the VM should have booted now. Let's log into these VMs. I can't remember if I changed the awful default um, login password on these VMs a while ago. Let's log into each of them. Um, the disgraceful um, password that you log in with the um, demo, I should say, or at least the shareable version of Windows 10 there. Um, awful one to type in there. It's got all kinds of upper, lowercase, and special characters. And as you can see, these VMs are not going to boot up very fast. And a lot of that is because we've only assigned them a single CPU. Now, we could have ramped those up significantly in this virtual environment with CPU sharing and stuff like that. But I'm trying to avoid doing that because I want to make sure we've got more than enough CPU and hardware 
for the system to run generally. I don't want the system to act as any kind of bottleneck in what we're doing here. As we can see, the two VMs have now loaded. Um, as again, because this is um, a trial version, you can see the Windows license has expired down there. But we can go down, open up the task manager on both of these VMs, get them open there. As we go into both of them, we can see their CPU is obviously going absolutely bananas because we've assigned it only a single 2.2 gigahertz uh, non-GPU equipped core. So we can see that CPU is going absolutely crazy. But as you can see within Windows, the 12 gig of memory is ready and available. It's not using all of it straight away. On top of that, in the second VM, we can go in, go into the performance. And again, there is our 12 gig of memory being visible there. So it's accessible and visible on the Synology NAS. It's accessible and visible within the VMs. I'm going to tick these off as successful. And of course, um, we kind of knew this would work because we were utilizing 32 gig of memory, which this CPU more than says that it can support. But it's Synology themselves that say you have to use first party supported memory. But for now, let's shut down both of these VMs and what we're going to do now is power down the device uh, and I'm going to go ahead and install the two Kingston 32 gig DDR4 SODIMM non-ECC modules inside this device. Reboot of course between and then we're going to strap on 24 gig of memory to each of these VMs once they've finished um, the whole system has rebooted. Our first VM has shut down there. We're just waiting on that second VM to shut down it's nearly done should be done and the vms have switched off so let's go ahead and power down this device shut it down completely and now i'm going to fast forward i'm going to go ahead and install these two kingston modules into this device and show you guys what happens hopefully what you're going to see in a few seconds is my screen and not me on camera if you see me on camera that means the system didn't work and i'll be showing you a nas with a big old red light on it but let's fast forward to the installation of that kingston memory Okay, so I'm pleased to confirm that the DS1621 Plus has rebooted. I've not logged into this device yet, so let's go ahead and log in and see what exactly goes on. As you can see, the VMs, we've not rebooted them, so they're still showing as blank. But let's go ahead and go into the control panel first. Let's have a quick look here at the information center, and we can see that the 64 gig has at least been recognized by the Synology system and that CPU. But utility is going to be something very, very different. So let's open up the resource monitor as well. Let's go into the memory monitor there. We can see that it's recognized that memory. But once again, that's not called, you know, causality and effect. Let's go into the VM management tool. And we're going to go ahead and power on each of those VMs just like we did before. So let's go ahead. If we can see, it's going to block and jump and grab a bunch of that memory. As I've now realized, let's force shut down that what we really wanted to do, and I may have damaged that VM by doing that, so please don't do that at home. What we really wanted to do was make sure that we edited that the amount of memory. So we're gonna ramp that up to 24 gig of memory per module. Let's go ahead there, we've got 24 gig. And we're gonna do that with the other one as well. So we can edit that one there. Ramp that up to 24 gig of memory. So we occupied by the VM. And there we go, they're both showing 24 gig. So once again, let's power those on. Don't be surprised if that first VM has to do a quick Windows recovery because some idiot, i.e. me, has just rammed on the power button there. So let's go ahead and turn those both on. Let those power up. That first VM we should be able to connect to. There you go, it's complained a little bit there because I um, inadvertently did that force crash there. It's powering on that second VM for us. We can see that that memory is now being ramped up quite substantially there. And then we can connect to that other VM, leave that to do its booting uh, mechanics. And again, it's going to take a little bit of time. What did it take last time? Two, three minutes. Remember, we are running uh, a copy of Windows 10 here off a single core, often uh, a mechanical hard drive here. So no fast boot, boot in uh, SSD being utilized for this system. Um, but as we can see, the system has allowed us, at least visually, to occupy all of that memory being utilized by the software. If we go down into the processes there, which where's the tab for processes? I always forget in the task manager. And the task manager should allow us to at least see the virtual machine manager has occupied um, or at least registered the occupation of 48 gigabytes 
of memory there. And again, we are using screen recording there throughout the course of our video. So we can go ahead and go back. Um, let's log in there. So again, we're going to go for that disastrous password that we hate so much. Log into them there. leave those two boot in at the moment it's all looking quite promising there for our memory testing that it has at least acknowledged that 64 gig of memory and again regardless of when we go into these individual virtual machines and they almost certainly show us in the task manager that they're both displaying um 24 gig of memory each i would still be slightly hesitant here um to recommend it simply because that C those CPU pages not highlighting that 64 gig of memory maximum. I'm slightly concerned by that, um, but we'll have to see. And again, I will be running tests on a QNAP NAS very, very soon that says that it can occupy the 64 gig of memory on this on this CPU. So let's go ahead and occupy, uh, open up that task manager there on both of these. And we're going to get a big old notable degree of slowdown there. Again, a lot of that simply down to these VMs just being absolutely um, hard going there on the architecture. So let's go there. We've got that CPU again at 100% straight away. Memory is obviously uh, comparatively low. Uh, and then you can see it has registered 24 gig of memory being reserved by the VM and visible uh, within the VM's own Windows 10 GUI and task manager. So we're just going to give that a second there. We are, of course, taxing this system remarkably heavily there on a single core processor. But again, 24 gig of memory still readily visible there on that system. So we can go for it there. And again, we will be doing a follow-up very, very soon using Passmark um, on not so much this system, but when we were running tests on some of the Xeon stuff. Um, but as you can see there, it has, willing, it has been willing to see the 24 gig of memory, at least here. But again, that is non-conclusive. It has to be said, we would have to be running some processes on those individual VMs to properly occupy that memory, which is a whole bigger video in itself, which is something I'm going to be working on very soon. We're just getting all the parts together for that, where we're going to show just how much these systems are actually able to use that memory. Not just show the memory, but actually occupy it but for now i've got to say that on the face of it it does look like it has been able to see that kingston memory successfully here so if you have enjoyed this video click like if you want to learn more click subscribe there are links in the description uh, to both a nas compare article about this memory and this system alongside that there should be links to other useful resources as well we'll be continuing our look at this processor this memory and some other unofficial memory upgrades very very soon but otherwise thank you so much for watching i hope you enjoyed the video i will see you next time